Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now we're going to be learning how to use the Hansver dictionary. Now we have a file of this dictionary, so you can download this. It's a PDF file, and I do recommend students to purchase the dictionary. Looking up words would be much easier. Now what I'm going to do is go through two verb entries, and just to explain in a bit of detail how this dictionary is used. So here we have the entry. The lamb, the bat, and the scene. So let's just write this out. So lamb, bat, and then the scene. So what will always happen actually when we look up a verb is the following: is that this is actually the past tense verb. So we have the lamb denoted by the letter L, the bat denoted by the letter B. And the scene denoted by the letter S. And in between, we have the A and the I, and then the A again. These denote the actual harakat on the past tense verb. So le, bi, se. So there's a fetha there, kasre there, and a fetha there. Now remember, we said that. A past tense verb will always have its fa kalima and lam kalima having a fatha. The I'm talking about the ma'loom, the active form. So this will always be the active form in the Hansa dictionary. And this is the radical that changes. So here we're told it's a kasra. Now when we construct a present tense verb from the bise. Let's just do this. What we do is first of all we put the alamatul mudhari. So it's the the ya. Then we put the three letters: the lam, the ba, and then the sin. This gets a fatha always. The fat kalima gets a sukun. So yell, and remember the scene always gets a dhamma. So it's this letter that changes. Now we don't know if it's a fatha, a kasra, or a dhamma. What does the Hans V tell us? This letter A represents this letter, so it's actually the fatha. Now if this was an I, it would be a kasra, and if it was a U, it would be a dhamma. Now, what does lebisa mean? It says here to put on, to wear. To put on, wear what? A dress, a garment. So this tells us that this verb is actually transitive. So you can say, for example, lebisa Muhammadun thobahu. Muhammad put on his garment. So the garment is the object. Now, in the Hansa dictionary, actually, this. Letter, the ha, and here as well, indicates that this is the object. So, so to put on and wear a dress. So, the dress or the garment is the object, and the person putting on the dress is the subject, the fa'il. So it's a transitive verb. In other words, we can have the passive form for lebisa and for yelbasu. So, for example, let's make this into the passive. It would be, let's put the lamb, the ba, and then the sin. It would be, lu bi se. It was worn. So lu bi se a thobe. The garment was worn. Who wore it is not mentioned. Now I'll go through another entry, and we have the verb here. Hasuna. So the ha. Then we have the sin. And then the noon. Here we're told the first haraka is a fatha, ha. The second radical is a dhamma. And the third radical is a fatha. So, actually. This will always be 
a fatha, and this will always, always be a fatha as well. Because they're past tense verbs. If they don't have a fatha here and fatha here, it means that they're not past tense verbs. But you'll notice a verb will always have, following the past tense, a letter here, which notes the ain kanima in the mudara. So here it's a dhamma as well. So it's hasuna, and the present tense is yah. So yah sunu. And this means to be handsome, to be beautiful, lovely, nice, fine, good. So you notice by these definitions, it's intransitive. That the verb does not affect an object. So in other words, we can't have a passive verb from these two. Now remember I told you, if the ain kenima of the past tense has a dhamma, in most cases it would be intransitive. So that's a, keep that as a rule. So if you see a verb that has a dhamma in its ain kenima, then chances are it's going to be intransitive. And there's no passive form. That's briefly about how to construct verbs. وصلى الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم